Hello everyone, welcome to tutorial 2 of LTEC 620. In this tutorial, I want to talk a little bit about manipulating and adjusting the design area. So as you can see here, I've already loaded up tutorial one, our file from the previous tutorial. And as you can see here, I have a design area that's a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. And what I want to emphasize is how to move around this area comfortably. And to do that, there's really just a few simple things you need to know. Most of the time, the tool that you're going to be using is the one that's selected by default, which as you can see here, if you follow my mouse, is the move tool. And this allows you to select things and to draw different shapes, to grab handles and manipulate different objects in the design area. I want to distinguish this tool from the view tool, or in a lot of other applications, this is called the pan tool. Basically what I could do is if I hold down the space bar, Notice that the cursor changes to this little five finger hand and what I can do is actually move the entire design area around. I can move it up, down, left and right. And if I release the space bar, it automatically goes back to the move tool. And so I can also use the keyboard shortcuts. If I wanted to click on the view tool, I could just click on H and it's going to stay in the view tool mode. And if I wanted to quickly switch back over to the move tool, I can hit V on my keyboard. So I want you to become really comfortable with switching between those two views. Honestly, most designers are going to use the space bar to quickly switch over to the view mode from move mode. Now, the other important thing that you're going to want to know is how to zoom in and out. And there's lots of different ways to do that in Affinity Designer. Perhaps the two most common ways are to use the keyboard and or the mouse. So on the mouse, what you can do is hold down your option command key and just scroll the mouse wheel and that will zoom you in and out. And you can see up here, it's telling you what percent of your zoom you are actually seeing. Now, another important way of doing that is simply hold down Command and hit plus or minus. Or if you're on Windows, Control and plus or minus. And this will move your design area. It will zoom it in and out. Now, an important shortcut is to hit Command Zero, which will expand and center your design area on your screen. So you could imagine, let's say I'm zoomed way out and I have it panned way over to the side here because I'm working on something, but suddenly I want, I want to snap back quickly to front and center. All I have to do is hit Command Zero or Control Zero on Windows and boom, my design area is back and visible. So another quick thing I want to show you is how to turn on the grid. In the last tutorial, we learned about how to turn on the rulers but now let's talk about how to show the grid. And the way we do that is come to the view menu and click show grid. And when you do that, let me zoom in a little bit. You can see here that Affinity Designer has put in a default grid for me. And you can see that there is a major grid line every 100 pixels. And then it looks like every 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, every 20 pixels, there's a minor line. Now let me show you how to adjust that. So you could come up to view and if you scroll down to grid and access manager, you can select that and this window will pop up and you can see here, this is another way to toggle the grid. And right now I have it in automatic mode. And so Affinity Designer is using some basic logic to determine what's a sensible grid for this particular design area that I'm working with, a thousand by a thousand pixels. If I wanted to, however, I could go in and adjust the basic settings of this. And so, for example, when I did that, it switched to spacing of 64 pixels. And so now our grid is showing 64 pixels. I could change this and say, I just want 20 pixels or maybe I want something even more granular. I could go down to 10 pixels 
or I could do something really serious and go down to two pixels, which is almost impossible to see. Additionally, I could also switch over to advanced and here you're getting tons of options about different grids you could make. So for example, if you're designing something for a game, let me switch back over here to, let me make this back to 64 pixels and come over and choose isometric. You can see here, it's creating an isometric grid. There are triangular grids and depending on different styles of tasks, you may or may not want these more advanced grid types. We're gonna stick with a basic standard view. And for right now, let's just keep it to automatic, which is going to use this every 20 pixels is a minor line and every 100 pixels a major line. And in Affinity Designer parlance, that's grid lines and then subdivision lines. Now, interestingly, we can change the color of these lines really easily. And if you click here, the color wheel comes up. If you don't want to use the color wheel, you could use swatches or you could actually get RGB sliders if you wanted those. And let me just show you quickly, if I wanted to have red grid lines, I could click on those. If I wanted blue lines, I could click on those. And of course, I can change the opacity of these to make them lighter or darker, depending on what I want to do. All right, so let's leave this. I'm going to just quickly bring this back to a gray scale, and I'm, I'm going to switch back over to swatches quickly and set it to something about here, maybe a touch darker, just so we can see it. Let's click there. Good. Okay. So let's go ahead and close that and let me center this. So those are just some basic manipulations of the design area that I think are going to be important for you to know. Thanks, and I'll see you in Canvas.